Well, good morning, Mr. Avalafia. Thank Richard. you for uh, Richard. Thank you for joining us today. So we s we're seeing most rotorcraft now. They're still having the same designs, and they haven't really changed since like the 1950s to the 70s. Um, and there's been a bit of stagnation in the aviation market. Things like uh, you know lack of uh, fuel efficiency, performance, affordability, etc. So can you tell us a little bit about why do you think there's been a lack in rotary rotary wing in, uh, innovation in the past few decades? My way of thinking is that the nature of innovation has changed. It hasn't stopped, it's changed. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing sort of a mirror of what we've seen in the jetliner business. The optimal shape for a jetliner was arrived at in the 60s, you know, potted engines under swept wings and uh, some kind of round or oval fuselage. It hasn't really changed very much. And it's the mm -hmm. same with a rotorcraft. You've had tremendous progress in avionics, turbine engines, onboard self-protection systems, uh, data connectivity, uh, transmissions, so many other areas that frankly they've eclipsed the importance of the airframe shape or configuration. Mm -hmm. What do you think the prospects are for the future vertical lift initiative? I don't think there's anything important that needs to be done here and mm -hmm. uh, I think this program will probably collapse under its own weight uh, around the time it gets going as a procurement program sometime I expect early in the next decade. Mm -hmm. The reality is that the value proposition from all the other improvements you're seeing in this business, the, uh, the engines, the avionics, the what have you, will simply m make those uh, upgrades uh, a, a much more affordable and mm -hmm. a compelling value proposition. Thank you so much for this interview. Pleasure. Thank you.